cardiovascular disease CVDS Key fact Cardiovascular disease are the leading cause of death globally An estimated 17.9 million people die from CVDS in 2019 representing 32% of all global deaths of these deaths 85% were due to heart attack and stroke over three quarters of CVD deaths take place in low and middle income country out of the 17 million premature deaths under the age of 70 due to non-communicable disease in 2019, 38% were caused by CVDS. Most cardiovascular disease can be prevented by addressing behavioral risk factors such as tobacco use, unhealthy diet, and obesity, physical inactivity, and harmful use of alcohol. It is important to detect cardiovascular disease as early as possible so that management with counseling and medicines can begin. What are cardiovascular disease? Cardiovascular disease, CVDS, are a group of disorder of the heart and blood vessel. They include coronary heart disease, a disease of the blood vessel supplying the heart muscle, cerebrovascular disease, a disease of the blood vessel supplying the brain, peripheral arterial disease, a disease of blood vessel supplying the arms and legs, rheumatic heart disease, damage to the heart muscle and heart valves from rheumatic fever caused by streptococcal bacteria, congenital heart disease, birth defect that affect the normal development and functioning of the heart caused by malformation of the the heart structure from birth and deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism blood clot in the leg veins which can dislodge and move to the heart and lungs heart attack and stroke are usually acute event and are mainly caused by a blockage that prevent blood from fl flowing to the, the heart or brain. The most common reason for this is a buildup of fatty deposits on the inner walls of the blood vessel that supply the heart or brain. Stroke can be caused by bleeding from a blood vessel in the brain or from blood clots. What are the risk factors for cardiovascular disease? The most important behavioral risk factors of heart disease and stroke are unhealthy diet, physical inactivity, tobacco use and harmful use of alcohol. The effect of behavioral risk factors may show up in individual as raised blood pressure, raised blood glucose, raised blood lipid, and overweight and obesity. These intermediate risk factors can be measured in primary care, care facilities and indicate an increased risk of heart attack, stroke, heart failure, and other complications. 
cessation of tobacco use, reduction of salt in the diet, eating more fruit and vegetable, regular physical activity, and avoiding harmful use of alcohol have been shown to reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease. How policy that create conducive environment for making healthy choice affordable and available are essential for motivating people to adopt and sustain healthy behaviors. There are also a number of underlying determinants of CVDs. These are a reflection of the major force driving social, economic and cultural change, globalization, urbanization, and population aging. Other determinants of CVDs include poverty, stress, and hereditary factors. In addition, drug treatment of hypertension, diabetes, and high blood lipid are necessary to reduce cardiovascular risk and prevent heart attack and stroke among people with these conditions. What are common symptoms of cardiovascular disease? Symptoms of heart attack and stroke? Often, there are no symptoms of the underlying disease of the blood vessel. A heart attack or stroke may be the first sign of underlying disease. Symptoms of a heart attack include pain or discomfort in the center of the chest and or pain or discomfort in the arm, the left shoulder, elbow, jaw or back. In addition, the person may experience difficulty in breathing or shortness of breath, nausea or vomiting, light headedness or faintness, a cold sweat and turning pale. Women are more likely than men to have shortness of breath, nausea, vomiting and and back or jaw pain. The most common symptom of a stroke is sudden weakness of the face, arm, or leg, most often on one side of the body. Other symptoms include sudden onset of numbness of the face, arm, or leg, especially on one side of the body. Confusion, difficulty speaking or understanding speech, difficulty seeing with one or both eye, difficulty walking, dizziness, and or loss of balance or coordination, severe headache with no known cause and or fainting or unconsciousness. What is rheumatic heart disease? Rheumatic heart disease is caused by damage to the heart valve and heart muscle from the inflammation and scarring caused by rheumatic fever. Rheumatic fever is caused by an abnormal response of the body to infection with streptococcal bacteria which usually begins at a sore throat or tonsillitis in children. Rheumatic fever mostly affects children in developing countries, especially where poverty is widespread. Globally, about 2% of deaths from cardiovascular disease are related to rheumatic heart disease. Symptom of rheumatic heart disease. Symptom of rheumatic heart disease include shortness of breath, fatigue, irregular heartbeat, chest pain, and fainting. Symptom of rheumatic fever include fever, pain, and swelling of the joint.
nor sir, stomach cramp and vomiting. Why are cardiovascular disease a development issue in low and middle income countries? At least three quarters of the world death from CVD occur in low and middle income countries. People living in low and middle income countries often do not have the benefit of primary health care programs for early detection and treatment of people with risk factor for CVD. People in low and middle income countries who suffer from CVDs and other non-communicable diseases have less access to effective and equitable health care services which respond to their need. As a result, for many people in this country, detection is often late in the course of the disease and people die at a younger age from CVDs and other non-communicable diseases often in their most productive years. The poorest people in low and middle income countries are most affected at the household level. Evidence is emerging that CVDs and other non-communicable disease contribute to poverty due to catastrophic health spending and high out-of-pocket expenditure. At the macroeconomic level, CVDs place a heavy burden on the economies of low- and middle-income countries. How can the burden of cardiovascular disease be reduced? The key to cardiovascular disease reduction lies in the inclusion of cardiovascular disease management intervention in universal health coverage package. Although in a high number of country health system require significant investment and reorientation to effectively manage CVDs. Evidence from 18 countries has shown that hypertension programs can be implemented efficiently and cost-effectively at the primary care level, which will ultimately result in reduced coronary heart disease and stroke. Patients with cardiovascular disease should have access to appropriate technology and medication. Basic medicine that should be available include aspirin, beta blocker, and geotensin converting enzyme inhibitors and statins. An acute event such as a heart attack or stroke should be promptly managed. Sometimes surgical operations are required to treat CVDs. They include coronary artery bypass, balloon angioplasty, where a small balloon-like device is threaded through an artery artery to open the blockage, valve repair and replacement, heart transplantation and artificial heart operations. Medical devices are required to treat some CVDs. Such devices include pacemaker, prosthetic valves, and patches for closing holes in the heart. WHO response. In 2013, WHO member state agreed on global mechanism to reduce the avoidable NCD burden, including a global action plan for the prevention and control of NCDs 2013 to 2020. This plan aimed to reduce the number of premature deaths 
from NCDs by 25 percent by 2025 through nine voluntary global targets. Two of the targets directly focus on preventing and controlling CVDs. Target six reduce global prevalence of raised blood pressure by 25% between 2010 and 2025. Tar target 8. At least 50% of eligible people should receive drug therapy and counseling, including glycemic control to prevent heart attack and stroke by 2025. In addition, Target 9 state that there should be 80% availability of the affordable basic technologies and essential medicines, including generic required to treat major NCDs in both public and private facilities. Achieving these targets will require significant investment in and strengthening uh, of health system. WHO is currently cervical cancer. Key fact, cervical cancer is the fourth most common cancer among wo women globally with an estimated 604,000 new cases and 342,000 deaths in 2020. About 90% of the new cases and deaths worldwide in 2020 occurred in low- and middle-income countries. To human papillomavirus, HPV type 16 and 18, are responsible for nearly 50% of high-grade cervical pre-cancers. HPV is mainly transmitted through sexual contact and most people are infected with HPV shortly after the onset, onset of sexual activities. More than 90% of them clear the infection Eventually, women living with HIV are six times more likely to develop cervical cancer compared to women without HIV. Vaccination against HPV and screening and treatment of pre-cancer lesions is a cost-effective way to prevent cervical cancer. Cervical cancer can be cured if diagnosed at an early stage and treated promptly. Comprehensive cervical cancer control include primary prevention, vaccination against HPV, secondary prevention, screening and treatment of pre-cancerous -can Legion, tertiary prevention, diagnosis and treatment of invasive cervical cancer, and palliative care. Overview Worldwide, the cervical cancer is the fourth most frequent cancer in women with an estimate. 604,000 new cases in 2020 of the estimated 342,000 deaths from cervical cancer in 2020. About 19% of these occur in low- and middle-income countries. Women living with HIV are six times more likely to develop cervical cancer compared to women without HIV. And an estimated 5% of all cervical cancer cases are attributable to HIV. Moreover, in all world regions, 
the contribution of HIV to cervical cancer falls disproportionately on younger women. In high-income countries, programs are in place which enable girls to be vaccinated against HPV and women to get screened regularly and treated adequately. Screening allow precancerous lesion to be identified at a stage where, when they can easily be treated. In low- and middle-income countries, there is limited access to these preventative measures and cervical cancer is often not identified until it has further advanced and symptom develop. In addition, access to treatment can of cancerous lesion, for example, cancer surgery, radiotherapy and chem- chemotherapy may be limited resulting in a higher rate of death from cervical cancer in this country. The high mortality rate from cervical cancer globally, age standardized rate among women, 13.3 per 100,000 in 2020 could be reduced by effective intervention at different stage of life. HPV and cervical cancer A large majority of cervical cancer, more than 95%, is due to the human papillomavirus, HPV. HPV is the most common viral infection of the reproductive tract. Most sexually active women and men will be infected at some point in their lives, and some may be repeatedly infected. More than 90% of the infected population eventually clear the infection. Cervical cancer is by far the most common HPV-related disease. Nearly all cases of cervical cancer can be attributed to HPV infection. Although most HPV infections cleared up on their own and most precancerous lesions resolve spontaneously, there is a risk for all women that HPV infection may become chronic and precancerous lesion progress to invasive cervical cancer. It takes 15 to 20 years for cervical cancer to develop in women with normal immune system. It can take only 5 to 10 years in women with weakened immune system, such as those with untreated HIV infections. Cervical Cancer Control A Comprehensive Approach The global strategy toward eliminating cervical cancer as a public health problem adopted by the World Health Assembly in 2020 recommends a comprehensive approach to cervical cancer prevention and control. The recommended actions include intervention across the life course, primary prevention, goals from 9 to 14 years, HPV vaccinations, goals and boys should also be offered as appropriate health information and warnings about tobacco use, sex education tailored to age and culture, condom promotion and provision for those engaged in sexual activity, male circumcision, secondary prevention from 
13 years of age for women from the general population and 25 years of age for women living with HIV. Screening with a high performance test equivalent or better than HPV test, followed by intermediate treatment or as quickly as possible after an HPV molecular positive test. Tertiary prevention or women as needed treatment of invasive cancer at any age, surgery, radiotherapy, chemotherapy, palliative care, cervical cancer prevention should encompass a multidisciplinary including component from community education, social mobilization, vaccination, screening, treatment, and palliative care. HPV vaccination. There are currently four vaccines that have been pre-qualified by WHO are protecting against HPV type 16 and 18, which are known to cause at least 70% of cervical cancer. The nine valent vaccines protect against five additional oncogenic HPV type, which cause a further 20% percent of cervical cancer. Two of the vaccines also protect against HPV type 6 and 11, which cause anal genital wards. Clinical trial and post-marketing surveillance have shown that HPV vaccines are safe and effective in preventing infection with HPV infection, high-grade precancerous lesion, and invasive cancer. HPV vaccines work best if am administered prior to exposure to HPV, therefore to prevent cervical cancer. WHO recommend vaccinating girl H 9 to 14 years when most have not started sexual activities. Some countries have started to vaccinate boys as the vaccination prevent HPV related cancer in males as well as HPV vaccination does not replace cervical cancer screening in countries where HPV vaccines is introduced, screening programs, population-based screening programs and needed to identify and treat cervical precancer and cancer to reduce cervical cancer incidence and death. Screening and treatment of cervical precancer lesion, screening Cervical cancer screening involves testing for HPV infection to detect precancer and cancer, followed by treatment as appropriate. Testing is done among w women who have symptoms and may feel perfectly healthy. When screening detect an HPV infection or precancerous lesion, these can easily be treated and cancer can be avoided. Screening can also detect cancer at an early stage where treatment has a high potential for cure. With its updated guidelines, WHO now encourages countries to use HPV tests for cervical screening, including HPV, DNA, and HPV mRNA test. HPV DNA testing detects high risk strain of HPV, which causes almost all cervical cancers. HPV mRNA detects HPV infection leading to cellular transformation. Unlike tests that rely on visual 
inspection. HPV testing is an objective test. It has been shown to be simpler, prevent more pre-cancer and cancer, and save more lives. It is also more cost-effective than visual inspection technique or cytology, common known as pap smear. Screening should start from 13 years of age in the general population of wo women with regular screening with a validate HPV test every 5 to 10 years and from 25 years of age with women living with HIV. Women living with HIV also need to be screened more frequently every 3 to 5 years. The process for a healthcare provider obtaining a cervical sample is similar with both cytology and HPV testing. However, WHO suggests that self-collected samples can be used when providing HPV DNA testing. This does not apply to HPV mRNA test. Women need to receive appropriate support to feel confident in managing the process. Screening must be linked to treatment and management of positive screen screening test. HPV positive women may be treated without diagnostic verification in limited resource setting. A test is triage the HPV positive women, for example, via is essential for treating HIV positive women. Try male treatment. Key fact nearly three in four children or three hundred million children at two to four years regularly suffer physical punishment and or physical psychological violence at the hand of parents and caregiver. One in five women and one in thirty men report having been sexually abused as a child aged from zero to seventeen years. One hundred twenty million girls and young women under twenty eight years of age have suffered from a false sexual contact. Consequences of child maltreatment include impaired lifelong physical and mental health, and the social and occupational outcome can ultimately slow a country's economy and social development. A child who is abused is more likely to abuse others as an adult, so that violence is passed down from one generation to next, the next. It is therefore critical to break this cycle of violence and in so doing create positive multi-generational impact. Preventing child maltreatment before it starts is possible and requires a multi-sectoral approach. Effective prevention approaches including supporting parents and teaching positive parenting skills and enhancing law to prohibit violent punishment. Ongoing care of children and family can reduce the risk of maltreatment reoccurring and can minimize its consequences. Child maltreatment is an abuse and neglect that occurs to children under 18 years of age. It includes all types of physical and or emotional ill treatment, sexual abuse, neglect, negligence, and commercials or other exploitations, which result in actual or potential harm to the child's health, survival, development, or dignity in the context of a relationship of responsibility, trust, or power. Scope of the problem. 
Try maltreatment yield global problem with serious lifelong consequences. In spite of recent national survey in several low and middle income countries, data from many countries are still lacking. Child maltreatment is complex and difficult to study. Current estimates vary widely depending on the countries and the method of research yield. Estimates depend on the definitions of child maltreatment yield, the type of child maltreatment studied, the coverage and qualities of official statistics, the coverage and quality of survey that request cell report from victim, patients, or caregivers. Nonetheless, international study revealed that nearly three in four children aged two to four years regularly suffer physical punishment and or psychological violence at the hand of parents and caregivers and one in five women, and one in 13 men report having been sexual abuses as a child. Every year, there are estimated 40, 150 homicides dead in children under 18 of years of age, some of which are likely due to child maltreatment. This number almost certainly underestimates the true extent of the problem. Since a significant proportion of death due to child maltreatment are incorrectly attributed to porn, burn, drowning, and other causes. In armed conflict and refugee setting, girls are particularly vulnerable to sexual violence. Exploitations and abuse by combatants, security forces, members of their communities, aid worker, worker, and others. Consequences of maltreatment. Child maltreatment causes suffering to children and families, and can have long-term consequences. Maltreatment causes stress that is associated with disruption in early brain development. Extreme stress can impair the development of the nervous and immune, immune system. Consequently, as adults, male children, children are at increased risk of behavioral, physical, and mental health problems such as perpetuating or being a victim of violence, depression, smoky, smoking, obesity, high-risk sexual behavior, unintended pregnancies, alcohol and drug misuse. Fire these behavioral and mental health consequences, maltreatment can contribute to heart disease cancer, suicides, and sexually transmitted infections. Violence against children is also a contributor to inequalities in education. Children who experience any form of violence in childhood have 13% greater likelihood of not graduating from school. Beyond the health, social and educational consequences of child maltreatment. There is an economic impact, including costs of hospitalizations, mental health treatment, child welfare, and longer-term health costs. Risk factor. Risk factor. Several risk factors for child maltreatment has been identified. Not all risk factors are present in all social and cultural contexts, and the list here provides an overview when attempting to understand the causes of child maltreatment. Child. It is important to emphasize that children are the victim and are never to blame for maltreatment. 
characteristic of an individual child that may increase the likelihood of being maltreated include being either under four years old or an adolescence, being unwanted or failing to fulfill the expectations of parents, having special lead, crying persistently or having abnormal physical features, having an intellectual disability or neurological disorder, identifying as or being identified as lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transgender, transgender. Parents or caregiver Characteristic of a parents or caregiver may that may increase the risk of child maltreatment include difficulty bonding with a newborn, not nurturing the child, having been maltreated themselves as a child, lacking awareness of child development, or having unrealistic expectations. Misusing alcohol or drugs, including during pregnancies. Having low cell esteem. Suffering from poor impulse control. Having a mental or neurological disorder. Being involved in criminal activities. Experiencing financial difficulty. Relationship. Characteristic of the relationship between families or among in the intimate partner, friends, and peers that may increase the risk of child maltreatment include family breakdown or violence between other family members, being isolated in the community or lacking a support network, a breakdown of support in child rearing from the extended family. Community and societal factor. Characteristic of community and society that may increase the risk of child maltreatment include gender and social inequalities, lack of adequate housing or services to support family and institutions high level of unemployment or poverty, the easy availability of alcohol and drugs, inadequate policies and programs to prevent child maltreatment, child pornography, child prostitution, and child labor, social and cultural norms that promote the glorified violence toward others, Support the ill of corporal punishment, demand, religious, gender role, or diminish the status of the child in parent child relationship. Social, economic, health, and education policies that lead to poor living standards or to socioeconomic inequality or instabilities. Prevention. Preventing and responding to child maltreatment require a multi-sexual sexual approach. The earlier such intervention occur in child life, children life, the greater the benefit benefit to the child, e.g., cognitive development, behavioral and social competence, educational attainments, and to societies, e.g. Reduce delinquencies and crime. Effective and promising intervention include parent and caregiver support, information and skill building sessions to support the development of nurturing, non violent parenting delivered by nurses, social workers or chain lay workers through a series of home visits or in a community setting. Education and life skill approaches. 
increasing enrollment in quality education to allow children acquire knowledge, skill, and experiences that build resilience and reduce risk factors for violence. Program to prevent sexual abuse that build awareness to teach skill skill to help children and adolescents understand consent, avoid and prevent sexual abuse and exploitations, and to seek help and support. Intervention to build a positive school climate and violent free environments and strengthening relationship between students, teachers, and administrators. Norm and value approaches program to transform restrictive and harmful genders and social norm around child rearing, child discipline and gender equality, and promote the nurturing role of fathers. Implementations and enforcement of law Law to prohibit violence and punishment and to protect children from sexual abuse and exploitation. Respond and support services. Early care recollections coupled with ongoing care of child victim and family to help reduce the occurrence of maltreatment and lessen its consequences to maximize the effect of prevention and care, WHO recommends that interventions are delivered as part of four-step, a four-step public health approach. Defining the problem, identifying causes and risk factors, designing and setting intervention aimed at minimizing the risk factors, disseminating information about effectiveness and of intervention, increasing the scale of prevent effective intervention. WHO response. WHO, in collaboration with partner, provide guidance on evidence-based child maltreatment prevention. C inspire seven strategy to end in violence against children. Provide evidence-based guidance to help frontline healthcare provide regular children who have suffered from violence and neglect, and provide evidence-based first-line support. Advocate for increased international support for an investment in evidence-based child maltreatment prevention. Provide technical support for evidence-based child maltreatment prevention program in several low- and middle-income countries. Child mortalities under five years. Key fact, in 2020s, an estimated 5 million children under the age of five years died, mostly from preventable and treatable causes. Approximately half of those dead, 2.4 million, occurred among newborn in the first 28 days of life. While the global under 5 mortality rate, U5MR, fell to 37 dead per 1,000 livers in 2020, Children in sub-Saharan continue to have the highest rate of mortalities in the world at 74 deaths per 1,000 live births, 14 times higher than the risk for children in Europe and North America. The leading causes of death in children under 5 years are preterm birth complications, first as physios, trauma, pneumonia, diarrhea, and malaria, all of which can be prevented or treated with access to affordable interventions in health and sanitation. Such COVID-2 infections among children and adolescents typically cause less severe illness and fewer deaths as compared to adults. Moreover, 
the youngest chimpanzees are least vulnerable, with less than 0.1% of lower. 1902, occurring in children under 5 years of age. Overview Substantial global progress has been made in reducing childhood mortality since 1990. The total number of under 5 dead worldwide has declined from 12.6 million in 1990 to 5 million in 2020s. Since 1990, the global under 5 mortality rate has dropped by 60% from 93 dead per 1,000 million births in 1990 to 37 in 2020s. This is equivalent to 1 in 11 children dying before reaching age 5 in 1990s compared to 1 in 27 in 2020. Why the global under 5 mortality rate U5MR fell to 37? 35 to 40 deaths per 1,000 live be birth in 2020s. Children in Sub-Saharan Africa continue to have the highest, highest rate of mortalities in the world at 74, 68 to 86 deaths per 1,000 live birth. 14 times higher than the risk for children in Europe and North America. Sub-Saharan Africa and Southern Asia account for more than 80% of 5 million under 5 deaths in 2020s. They only account for 53% of the global live births. Half of all under 5 deaths in 2020 occurred in just 5 countries. Nigeria, India, Pakistan, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, and Ethiopia. Nigeria and India alone account for almost a third of all dead. At the country level, under five mortality rates in 2020 range from two dead per 1,000 livers to 100 15 deaths per 1,000 livers, and the risk of dying before turning 5 for a child born in the highest mortality countries was about 65 times higher than in the lowest mortality countries. Globally, infectious diseases, including pneumonia, diarrhea, and malaria, along with preterm birth complications, birth asphyxia and trauma, and congenital anomalies remain the leading causes of death for children under 5 years. Access to basic life-saving interventions, such as skill delivery at birth, postnatal care, breastfeeding and adequate nutrition, Vaccinations and treatment for common childhood diseases can save many young lives. Minority children, particularly those with severe acute malnutrition, have a higher risk for death from common childhood illness such as diarrhea, pneumonia, and malaria. Nutrition-related factors contribute to about 45% of death in children under 5 years of age. COVID-19 disease and children health The evidence on death directly attributed to COVID-19 infections is strongly age-dependent with children and adolescent least affected. Children under 5 years represent approximately 2% of the global cases and 
0.1% of the global debt. Data from severe registration and vital statistics system, health management information system from 80 countries as well as specific countries while monitoring system indicate no significant deviation from expected mortality for this age group from 2020 and in some cases indicate fewer deaths that could be expected from historical data. As more data come in from countries and further analyses are performed, this result may change for 2021. Global response Sustainable Development Goal 3.2.1 The Sustainable Development Goals adopted by the United Nations in 2015 were developed to promote healthy life and well-being for all children. The SDG Goal 3.2.1 to end preventable deaths of newborn and under five children by 2030. There are two targets. One, reduce newborn mortalities to at least as low as 12 per 1,000 per in every country. And two, reduce under five mortalities to at least as low as 25 per 1,000 live birth in every country. Target 3.2.1 is closely linked with target 3.1.1 to reduce the global maternal mortality ratio to less than 70 dead per 100,000 live birth and target 2.2.1 on any own form of malnutrition. As malnutrition is a frequent contributing cause of death for under five children, this has been translated into new global strategy for women, children, and adolescents' health. Member states need to set their own targets and develop specific strategies to reduce child mortalities and monitor their progress. In 2020s, 125 countries have already met the SDG targets for under five mortalities and further 16 countries are expected to meet the target by 2013 if current trend continue. However, accelerated progress will be needed in 54 countries which will not achieve target by 2030s on current trend. 35 of these countries will need to double their current range of reductions without considering the additional challenges brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic. Meeting the SDG target in the 54 of track countries would reduce the numbers of under 5 deaths by 8 million between 2021 and 2030, reducing the numbers of under 5 deaths to 2.5 million in 2030. Focus efforts are still needed in Sub-Saharan Africa and Southern Asia, including fragile and conflict-affected situations. WHO response. WHO called on member states to address health equity through universal health coverage so that all children can access essential health services without undue financial hardship. Moving from business as usual to innovative, multiple and tailored approaches to increase access coverage and qualities of child health services will require strategic directions and an optimal mix of community and facility-based care. 
health sector and multi-sectoral effort are also needed to overcome inequalities and any negative effect of social determinants of health.